Hello and welcome to another episode of the MLS UK show. I'm Henry Hewitt and as always I'm joined by... Elliot Holman. I was going to say good afternoon. Could be good morning, could be good evening. I hope you're well. <laughs> yes, it could be any time. The beauty of podcasting, we've only been doing this for what, six years now, Elliot? Yeah, I'm still learning. I hope this podcast finds you well. Um, well, let's crack on then because uh, we've got loads to talk about today uh, or yesterday or tomorrow, whenever you do listen to this podcast. Um but uh, we're going to talk about the teams that I, I don't want to say we never talk about because we talk about every team here on the MLS UK show. But I want to talk about some of the teams that I've had good weekends and kind of gone under the radar a little bit so far this season. But we're going to big them up today. So that means that we're not going to be talking about Miami. Uh, they drew anyway to NYCFC. Um, but we will talk about LA Galaxy because they are top of the league. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but first, like I said last time, I text you before we record. I say, any teams you want to talk about? Any particular game you've been watching? You came back, Colorado Rapids. They beat LAFC 3-2. Elliot, the floor is yours. Yeah, well, um, I watched this game. It was, it, honestly, it was a model MLS weekend uh, this weekend. Um, lovely 6 p.m. start in the UK, which is nice. It's not too early. You know, you can enjoy your day and then just settle in for the evening. So we had Philly at six uh, and then Colorado at eight. And it was it was a thing of beauty. Um, I was staying with my parents uh, back in Norwich and I notified everyone. I put everyone on notice that I would be consuming all of the MLS um, in the evening. And um, yeah, Philly, solid win. Maybe we talk about that in a little bit. But Colorado have to... We have to start there because what a performance against LAFC and some cracking goals as well. The free kick in particular, of course. Um, and just kind of, they've just set the bar a little bit. Beating LAFC, sure, it was at home. Sure, it's against, you know, a, a team in their conference. But that's not something that we would typically say, yeah, Colorado, go and beat LAFC, easy. Um, so I thought really big moment. And of course, all the drama was at the end. Yeah, uh, Milohajevic scored his first goals for uh, Colorado, which I think is going to be a massive signing for them. Obviously, he did well with Chicago, then got his move to AZ, has come back. Uh, and for me, I don't know. I, I obviously know a lot about Jordi Milohajevic. He's US international. But I, I looked before and I thought, oh, yeah, he's only 25. For me, he just seems like he's been around for a lot longer and he's got a lot of very experienced head on his shoulders. So uh, great to see him getting his first goals. And uh, yeah, before the season, we were like, this Colorado team are cooking. They've got some good players, but then they're managed by Chris Armas. And so far, OK, this seven, so a, a playoff spot, but mid-table. Um, but I've been, yeah, a lot better from Colorado from A, what I expected with Chris Armas in charge, but also B, from last season as well. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it in the first episode. We 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 feared the worst for them with Armas in charge, and then of course, uh, first game they conceded four goals in the first half against Portland, and we thought, yeah, this is not great. Um, so I'm really pleased to see. You know, we we took notice of the fact that their roster was looking uh, was looking good, and I'm I'm pleased that that's finally coming to fruition. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, the beaten LAFC team, who uh, we're not going to touch too much on LAFC, but they have signed Kai Kamara this week, who uh, has added to his many, many MLS teams. Who Eleven. Host former clubs. Eleven, yeah, 11th club now. Uh, I mean, signed for LAFC. Um, I mean, Kai Kamara, obviously a player close to your heart with his links to Norwich, but like, what do you make of his signing? It's interesting, isn't it? I, I think where five six seven years ago he was expensive and he brought you goals and he was you know whether it was sporting kc or columbus um even colorado but now it feels like when teams just go and add kai like they have in the last couple of years at, at sort of like a later date it's like okay well we've had a look around We've seen what's on offer. We've seen what's left of our budget cap, our salary cap, and we feel like we might be able to make one more piece work. And if that piece is Kai Kamara, like I completely understand it. Um, you're not going to go and pay millions, but you are going to try to get him on a deal where he gets to come and play soccer again in the US, which is what he loves. And let's be honest, bring something to, to the side. It makes complete sense to me. LAFC 
you know, are LAFC the team that I would have expected to pick up Kai Kamara? No. Uh, maybe a Minnesota or um, top of my head, uh, back to Chicago or um, even a Philly, maybe. But like LAFC is, I think, because of the stardom that's attached to them, um, I think it surprised a few people, but it makes complete sense to me. Yeah, it's, for me, it seems a bit of a stopgap between Giroud signing and now. Uh, they clearly need that extra body in there. I mean, you look at some of the teams. I think, here's my theory, is that so Kai Kamara is one goal away from Landon Donovan in the all-time record. I think he's basically gone, come on, guys. I've played for nearly half of you. I need to get to second spot. So can I just sign for someone? And let's see, so he's played for Col uh, Columbus, San Jose, Houston, SKC, New England Revolution, Vancouver, Colorado, Minnesota, Montreal, Chicago, and they've gone, right, well, whose turn is it? LAFC, go, right, we'll have him. He'll score his two goals, and then he can go off to, I don't know, another team. St. Louis, they'll, they'll just start adding teams to MLS for Kai Kamara to play for. Um, you know, he's he's not far off Wondolowski, to be fair. I don't think he's going to score. How many would he, quick maths? I think you'd need 27 to beat him. So I don't think he's going to get to that point. But um, no, it, it's MLS experience. We say it's vital. So we're, we'll have to see for LAFC, uh, see if he can get his goals. Um, uh, just quickly off the top of your head, Elliot, who do you think he scored the most goals for in MLS? Which of those teams? <sighs> oh, I, I, I haven't got a clue. I SKC? It was SKC, yes. Mm. 38. He scored uh, 32 for Columbus, 2 for San Jose, 7 for Houston, uh, SKC uh, 38, and uh, New England Revolution 19, Vancouver 14, Col Colorado 17, Minnesota 1, Montreal 9, and Chicago 5. So uh, there you go. There's I would have gone Columbus up. or SKC, uh, and I know he scored once for Norwich. I was there. Well, what a time. If only that was in MLS, then he would be level with Landon Donovan right now. <laughs> but it isn't. <laughs> Thankfully for... I mean, you already travel enough from where you live to go and watch Norwich. Yeah. I don't think you need uh, an ocean to travel uh, as well. Um, right, well, let's move on to the second team we're going to talk about today. And it's uh, RSL. Um, RSL, an impressive win at the weekend, winning 3-1 against St. Louis. Uh, Arango has got his hat-trick. 21-minute uh, hat-trick, I think, at the end of the game. But... Should he have been on the pitch? Elliot, have you seen this incident? What did you make of it? Um, I personally think if he was playing in the Premier League, he would have been sent off for this. I agree. Um, but how many times do we say that in MLS? That's not that's not the way it works. Um, sometimes fortunately, sometimes unfortunately. Hey, look, the Premier League haven't got it right either. You know, they, they're not completely sorted on, on refereeing either. Um, fortunate to be on the pitch, yes. I understand when you're the team that that happens against. It's really frustrating. Um, but ultimately, you've, you've got to try to set... If, you know, if we're going to look at it analytically, we've got to give Arango some credit uh, for still, you know, scoring a 20-minute hat-trick uh, in a game for RSL. This is, you know, this is a real... This is a player that i'm gonna say is 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 huge for a team like rsl i'm really excited to see where they can go with a rango in this kind of form yeah well we've said for years that rsl kind of fall in the same place as dallas actually in that sort of teams that make the playoffs they're around between sort of third and sixth in the conference but we never get they, they might have one season where they get to the conference final maybe but we never get to mls cup RSL, having got a player like Arango, someone who knows where the goal is, he's fired up clearly. Uh, you know, he put in maybe not the punch to the chest, but he did put in a captain's performance, um, you know, to get them over the line in this game. To have him in the ranks, he could be the difference. You never know. It's, it's just, I think there's so much sometimes in MLS where we, we, we kind of, I don't want to say disregard a player like that, but you kind of automatically go, well, he plays for RSL, so, you know, he's good, but he's not going to get them over the line. This is a guy who could get them to MLS Cup. Now, it would rely on a few teams in the West having maybe iffy playoffs and not quite get, you know, performing there. But with him up top, kind of like a Mukhtar for Nashville as well, you never know. There's always that opportunity. 
feels like the season's just getting started as well. And he's got five goals. He's got four assists. Head coach is saying he's a driving force behind everything that we do. Um, he's a leader. Uh, I think RSL can go places if he stays fit big time. Yeah, one thing I will say that I didn't like, and it's not the punch to the chest, but what I didn't like, after the game, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Roman Berkey, the uh, St. Louis goalkeeper, swapping shirts with him after the game. I'm like, who has instigated that? Because if Arango's gone to him and gone, can I have your shirt? I've just got a hat-trick against you. That's a ballsy move. But if Berkey's gone, oh, you just got a hat-trick against me, can I have your shirt? It's like, hang on. I would want to burn that shirt. I won't want that shirt anywhere near me. This guy scored three goals against me, and now I'm swapping shirts with him. Uh, I know, just a personal point of view, but I think that's, uh, yeah, I, I, if, if, even if I was a goalkeeper and got asked about that, I'd be like, get out of my sight now. Don't talk to me ever again. Remember when Messi sent a beer to everyone, every goalkeeper he'd scored past? Yeah, but that was Messi. I, I, it, I'd, I'd be disappointed if that was happening for a Budweiser and I only got, he'd only scored one goal against me in like a Copa del Rey match or something, I'd be like, oh, I, I should have let a few more in <laughs> get the party started. Um, but so, but then again, you wouldn't want to be the guy who's got like 20 bottles of messy beer at home. Yeah. It, it may, yeah. Uh, right, let's move on to the next team we're going to talk about. And uh, this is Houston, because we got a tweet earlier in the week, at Salford Walshy. Uh, who is obviously a uh, an MLS fan. He's tweeted us before who lives near me in Salford. I've never seen him now. Um, he tweeted us going, you've got to talk about Houston, lads. And here we are. If we are going to talk about Houston, they've won three in a row. By the way, if there's anyone else we need to talk about, if we, you want us to talk about your team and get in touch on Twitter at MLS UK Show. Um, Houston, we were worried before the season started, weren't we? Because they've got a few injuries. Herrera's out, a few others. And they've just settled down and they're doing okay, aren't they? They're doing well. Yeah, Ben Olsen in charge. Um, ultimately, it's really simple with Houston. Really impressed. Hector Herrera's missing. He was so integral to everything that they did uh, last season, the way that they approached games. Um, I watched a lot more of Houston last year than I uh, usually do as well. Um, I, I consciously, I'm trying to watch the Western teams that I don't often get to see because of the time, etc. Um, and... They're missing Hector Herrera. They're missing their best player. So you think, okay, how are they going to start the season? They're grinding out results. They're doing it without their best player. And when he returns, which he will soon, he's in training reportedly, um, building up to you know match fitness. Maybe he can come on and play a bit part in the next couple of weeks. They're going to be even stronger. So Houston are a team to watch right now. Yes, definitely. They've won the last three games. Portland at home, no easy game. Colorado away. We've just been uh, saying how good Colorado have been. They won there. And then to beat San Jose, 1-0 down after a minute. Okay, you know, uh, Preston Judd, red card, very stupid. He actually got sent off for hitting someone, uh, thanks to VAR. Um, and uh, and then Houston turned it round eventually in the last 10 minutes to score to uh, Franco Escobar as well at the far post, which uh, for a former Atlanta player, it was, it was nice to see that he did that. Um, so, yeah, Houston up to fifth now in the West and continue to rise. Um, the team at the top of the West are LA Galaxy. Now, this was a very odd game at the weekend because uh, the amount of rain that it was. It's funny in MLS because if you see them, if you see that in uh, in England, where it rains far more in England than it does LA Galaxy, uh, LA, which is not the most shocking thing I will ever say on this podcast. But um, that match probably gets called off. Yeah, in LA, they they managed to get most of the rain off the pitch. Still impacted the game. LA scored early on, won the game one nil. Now. The, high, the the big talking points of this game, and we'll talk about Seattle in a moment, but the LA Galaxy, we have a saying at the end of this podcast that says five stars only, and that will continue for a long time. LA Galaxy are top of the West. We might have to find a new phrase. They are top of the West. Um, it might be too soon to suggest that the West is weaker than the East once again. Um, first of all, Fair play to LA Galaxy. Um, really good start to the season. We touched on it in the last podcast. Well, I say touched on it. We talked about them a lot. Um, Paint Sill, incredible signing. Looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I, th I think they've made a really good start because they haven't lost a game. But three wins and three draws, three ties, is enough to get them to the top of the West. I'm not saying it's a bad start. Of course it isn't. They're undefeated. 
But I think beating Seattle is significant because Seattle are, of course, a, a big side in the West. But it feels like maybe something's missing in the West. Like, could somebody have lost one and won five? Or, like, could could somebody have got a few more points than LA Galaxy? Absolutely. I think there's more to come from some of the teams in the West. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think LA Galaxy um, have clearly you know, took the first six games and gone with them and run with them. And, uh, you know, you have to play, you have to beat, or in this case, not lose to the teams that are in front of you. And I think there's there's been quite a few teams in both conferences that have started slow. Uh, if you look at the LA Galaxy's games so far, they drew a home to Miami in the opening game. Obviously, that was all about Messi and Suarez. Um, and they almost won that game. Going then to San Jose, winning Nashville draw, St. Louis draw, going to SKC, who are in a lot better form this year and winning and then beating Seattle. You look at those teams apart from Miami and think, okay, none of those teams have necessarily had an amazing start. They're not going to beat in Cincinnati or they're not going to beat in uh, Vancouver who've also, they've all had okay starts. So LA Galaxy, I think I've done what they've needed to do against the teams they've faced. But, I think what I've, I want to say as well is that you are right about that teams will start getting better and and uh, before, you know picking up. I've, they always say the cream rises to the top, and I think that will be the case. But I also think LA Galaxy have got more to come. You know they've got some new signings in there that are making a difference already. They will get more used to playing with the likes of Ricky Pooj. Uh and I think yeah, my it, the LA Galaxy. I've been impressed so far. And for this season, and I've said before, maybe it's because they haven't got like a Chicharito or there is Latan or, you know, they've not got this big superstar. They've got, I think they've they've done well in transfers. They've they've brought some good players in. The DPs are, are players that are more hungrier than what they've had before. So I'm really excited to see how this LA Galaxy team will do. Do I think they'll win MLS Cup? Probably not. I don't think they'll have enough, but I certainly think they've got enough. They'll make playoffs if they carry on doing what they're doing. But I think they've got enough to to push on and go quite far in the playoffs. If LA Galaxy aren't winning the Supporters Shield, aren't winning the Western Conference, who are you looking at in the early stages? Uh, in the West, um, let's have a look. Well, I'm not looking at Seattle, who we'll talk about in a moment. But, um, you know, I, I think you naturally go to LAFC. I think they've got more to come, even though they're in ninth at the moment. But other than that, you're then looking at a group of teams that are sort of like your RSLs, your Vancouver's, uh, Minnesota's, Houston's, SKC's, where they are, uh, and Colorado, where they've got enough about them to maybe put a charge in, enough about them to get to the top. But I think there's, you are right, there's not enough there for me that uh, you're going to see a team that is going to, dominate and then get to MLS Cup. I think it's going to, it is the East to lose this year, but other than, and this is why it's a great opportunity for LA Galaxy because they've, they've really, apart from LAFC, they've got a bunch of teams that are kind of in the same position as them. And it's all about, can they push on? Can they win the games they need to? So uh, that's why I think LA Galaxy could actually do quite well this season. Yeah. Seattle, they've played a game less than most, cut them some slack. However, winless and three losses. It's not a fantastic start, is it? No, it's not. I mean, they've had a few injuries, but, you know, I was watching um, the uh, wrap-up on Apple TV and Bradley Wright Phillips pointed out, and he made a good point, that they've got injuries, but their front four is probably what they were going to use anyway. You know, you've got Jordan Morris, and they've to say that, to say that that front four is is still there, is probably what they're going to go with going forward, um, give or take. They've only scored four goals. They've got joint, the joint least amount of goals in the whole of MLS alongside NYCFC and New England Revolution. Like, uh, they just can't hit the back of the net at the moment. Like, you look at the matches they've had so far, obviously lost this weekend to LA Galaxy. Uh, they lost 1-0 to Colorado as well a few weeks ago. 2-1 at LAFC. 0-0 against Austin. Uh, sorry, they drew against Colorado 1-1, but they lost at San Jose 3-2. Take that San Jose game out, out of the equation. They haven't scored many, but they haven't actually conceded many either. So that gives me a bit of hope for Seattle, that it's not like they're conceding loads of goals. If they get it right up front, which the irony for them is the one game they did actually score more than one, they actually lost the game. But if they can sort it out up front, I think Seattle, 
it's just a slow start. I can see in a few weeks, if they start scoring goals, they'll be up the table and they'll be pushing uh, into the playoffs. And like we just said, if the, you know, the West is not a strong league this year. So if a Seattle could go win the next few games, they'll find themselves suddenly up the table and looking towards the top, won't they? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Houston, Minnesota, Vancouver, the only teams in the West that have conceded less goals than uh, Seattle. So there's kind of a, there's a foundation there. They've just got to go and they've got to go and push and win games. And like you say, they've got that front four and it, it's not going to change with players coming coming back from injury. That front four is pretty pretty set. So um, you you hope they can they can kick on. But same story for for LAFC for Portland, who are also a little bit further down than we expected. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. Well, the I guess the final game we can talk about this week. Um, you you said before you wanted to talk about Philadelphia. They won. They kicked off the weekend with a two 0 victory over Minnesota. Um, a good win for Philadelphia. I think they've had a bit. Uh, they, the Champions League debacle kind of has has knocked them a little bit. But other than that, I think they, they're doing okay, aren't they? Yeah, Carranza making the difference up top, maybe as expected. Um, but the thing is, with this is classic Philly, isn't it? We've given we've heaped praise on Minnesota. I looked at that game and thought this is going to be a bit of a bit of a ding dong battle. This and there were chances for Minnesota, of course. But um, you know they turn up top of the league go to Philly tough place to go and it's classic Philly are organized they you know structurally tactically they know exactly what they're going to do and they they execute it perfectly win 2-0 make it look easy and that's where the credit's due and that's where the credit always goes to Jim Curtin he knows exactly how he wants that team to perform and ultimately it always wins out yeah, I think Philly win when they need to win. Like you said, Jim Curtin knows what he's doing. He's been around for so long. And you look at the table at the moment, they're in seventh place and they're only three points off the top and they've got a game in hand. This is what I mean about Philadelphia. They seem every year, they kind of, they know what they're doing. They know what they need to do. They, they sort of in a, there or thereabouts. And that's why they make playoffs and get to the, the top of the East so much is that they, they won't be worried now. They'll look and go, yeah, we're seventh. Okay, but... We're only three points from the top with that game in hand. So if we win that game in hand, then we're at the top of the conference and it's it's teams are chasing us again. So, uh, yeah, so big win for them. Uh, I thought, as you said, Derby, because Minnesota, they got um, an offside goal just before Philly made it 2-0. So I think that was at a point where the game were becoming a bit stretched. And I think because it's fine margins, Philadelphia, you know, Minnesota got their goal. It was offside. Philadelphia went, right, we'll just go up the other end and score. 2-0, game over. And I think that's what Philly do really well. They win the fine margins, the, the just little areas of the pitch where they need to just um, win that area or win that time of the match. They do it. And that's why they've been, um, well, they've been successful. They have not necessarily won MLS Cup, but they have been successful. They've been one of the better teams, haven't they, over the last four or five years. Yeah, and consistent as well. And you only have to look at the the, the training and the youth setup. Um, they all play that same formation that's going to feed into the way Jim Curtin wants to play. And so um, huge credit to, to what's been achieved there. They are a little light on silverware. They deserve a little bit more than than they have, to be honest with you, from the last couple of years. But um, undefeated so far this season, that's all that counts. Right. Well, that's almost it. Elliot, any other teams you want to talk about? Let's leave it there for the East, I think. Yeah, well, the, the other matches that were this weekend, we had Charlotte won, Cincy won, late goal from Cincy. DC, we're going to talk about them in the next few weeks. They won 1-0 against Montreal. They're level with Philadelphia in the East at the moment. Uh, Miami won, New York City FC won. Uh, the NYCFC goalkeeper really keeping a minute towards the end of the game. Orlando won, Red Bulls won. Uh, Lewis Morgan, top scorer. He's someone we need to talk about in the next few weeks as well. Smashing it for Red Bulls at the moment. Uh, SKC, impressive win away at Toronto, 3-1. Their next three games are at home, SKC, so they could push up the uh, the Western Conference. Uh, Austin beat Dallas 2-1 in the, the Texas Derby. Uh, Nashville 2, Columbus 2. Vancouver 3, Portland 2. Impressive start from Vancouver up to second in the West. And Atlanta 3, Chicago 0. And uh, to say that Atlanta have won all three of their home games and lost the two away games, yeah, that's basically where we're going to be, I think, Atlanta this season. But it's good to see Atlanta getting back to the old way of fast-paced, dominant football at home. So, uh, good to see. Um, right, a bit of news from MLS. The last uh, bits of the MLS UK show, we're just going to 
uh, mention this. Uh, Leo Messi has announced he will retire in MLS. We'll wait and see if that's the case um, because it seems to change every week with him. And uh, Kevin Sullivan has signed for Manchester City from Philadelphia Union. Now, is that interesting? Of course it is. An MLS player going to the Premier League. But what's even more interesting is that he's 14 years old. So uh, I think he's going to stay at Philly for a while yet. But Manchester City have bought him. Um, which we've said before, haven't we? It's great to see these players playing in the Premier League and being signed over there. But at 14 years old, I know he's kind of staying around for a bit longer, but you'd love to see him have kind of developed. Don't you Don't you agree? Developed in MLS and then maybe when he's 20 gone over? I don't know. Yeah, well, that would be the, that would be the logical, uh, you know, approach for, for all involved. But unfortunately, Manchester City are in a situation where they can do whatever they want. Uh, quite literally so um, the player's going to want to go the club are not going to be able to stand in his way it's one of those things sure we want to develop these players in, in MLS and not ideally hold on to them is he going to play for Man City at 20 let alone 14 I don't know P- potentially not um, but you know they took uh, you know they, they've taken players they've loaned them out Pep's very good at getting young players minutes. We've seen it with, um, you know, many, many players over the last few seasons. So there's every chance that this is huge, but it's not going to be huge for MLS, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, remember, of course, Freddie Adu. Freddie Adu played for Bolton Wanderers when he was 14. Oh, sorry, that was in my football manager career when I, in 2004, that happened. Uh, he did well, though. He got player of the season at 14. It's not uh, real. So it could happen. It's not real. No, it's not real. Um, and well, you know, with Sullivan anyway, he'll sign for Man City and then eventually end back up at uh, NYCFC. So we will see him uh, in MLS at some point. Um, right. Well, that's it from us. Thanks very much for watching on YouTube. Thanks very much for listening on your podcast provider. Remember, if you are watching on YouTube, give it subscribe. Press that button. Press the notification button as well. Like the video. We really appreciate it. If we've said anything that you agree with, disagree with. I have no opinion at all. Just stick it in the comments. Go on, put it in the comments. I have no opinion on that at all. It, we appreciate anything. Uh, and if you are listening on your podcast provider, then uh, please leave a review, leave a rating. But Elliot, there's one rule and one rule only. For now, LA Galaxy style, five stars only. Who knows if we'll go into the next year with that? Probably because we've been saying that every single year since doing it. Uh, Right, we'll be back next time. Enjoy uh, MLS this weekend. But for now, I've been Henry Hewitt. And I've been Elliot Holman. See ya. See ya.